previously on Judging Amy. Amy, I love you. Will you marry me? <laughs> Say hello to your son. <laughs> but I don't want easy. I want you. What is it? What's going on? Open the crash cart. All right, get a set of vital signs. Roll her to her side. She's bottoming out. Reduce the epidural. I have a lunch. Sloan Kettering people. You're kidding. You're taking the job? I'm talking to them about a job. Peter, I, everything will be fine. I'll be right over. He's a mess. This is nothing more than an overeager state attorney's office attempt to pull the wool over the eyes of a novice judge. Is that true? Mr. Hawkins killed his wife, Your Honor. I'm doing what I can to make sure he doesn't get away with it. Julian? Nurse! I need a nurse! That is so great. Maybe she can come to dinner this week. All right, all right. I mean, if she feels up for it. Okay. We'll tell her how much we love her. Okay. You too. Bye. You're sending Jillian home from the hospital. Can you believe it? Yes, I can. Why? It's a miracle Jillian got pregnant. It's a miracle Walter's all right. It's a miracle Jillian woke up. Why would God stop now? I thought you gave up coffee. I thought you gave up nagging. Anytime I show concern for your health, you call it nagging. Uh, no, anytime you try and take something away from me I enjoy, I call it nagging. Good morning, Mom. How are you feeling? That would show concern for my health. Good morning, Mom. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like enjoying a rare cup of coffee. And you? I'd like a cup of coffee in Tahiti. I see you're going to hear from two detectives and a coroner today. And the defense attorney is considering putting the wife murderer on the Alleged stand? Alleged wife murderer. Oh, that's right. I forgot. It was the one-armed, bushy-haired, devil-worshipping black man with a ski mask. I don't have to be objective. Can I get highlights? No. If I'm not a pain about the highlights, can I get a CD burner? No. What can I get? You can get in the car. Hey, look. You're in the paper. Here's your lunch money. Is that the wife murder? Putting your lunch money in the back of your backpack. Your mother can't talk about it. She has to be objective. What does that mean? It means that here in America, the man is innocent until proven guilty. And since all the evidence is just now being presented, it means that no one, least of all my immediate family, should refer to the defendant as the wife murderer. Are you going to be on TV? I don't know. Maybe. Like on the news? My friends might see it. If their parents have the TV on while they're eating dinner? It's entirely possible. Okay, Mom. I'm serious. Do not embarrass me. I'll do my best. Especially don't do that thing where you run sentences together and use a lot of big words just to make people feel stupid. I'll try not to do that thing. How long does this phase last? Until she's 38. I looked over your test results. Amazing. Your brain scan is fine, your blood work, everything. You're healthier than I am. Uh, Dr. Benjamin said the same thing. Yeah, right before he gave us the name of the physical therapist. Uh, did he mention you might notice an increased sensitivity to alcohol and medication? You should be aware of that. Well, I guess I better cancel that evening of bar hopping I had planned. No, just make sure you have a designated driver. <laughs> so this uh, previously undiagnosed eclampsia, I'm wondering how it came to be undiagnosed. We've been through this, haven't we? I think Jillian should hear. Sometimes we miss it. Your headaches were consistent with being nine months pregnant. Your blood pressure was only slightly elevated. And I'd canceled my last two appointments, so it's really all my fault. <laughs> An undiagnosed medical problem is not your fault, honey. You're not a doctor. Peter. What about her feet swelling? Even I noticed that. Again, that's a common occurrence in the third trimester. Dr. Miller, I think what my husband is trying to say is thank you very much for saving my life. 
I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I just want to make sure I understand why her life needed to be saved. Uh, Peter, it's, it's what we in the medical profession refer to as just one of those things. Meanwhile, you have a healthy wife and a healthy son. So stop worrying, go home and enjoy them. This is too late to take back that speech about how I don't believe in gag orders. Right, excuse us, coming through. Out of the way, come on. Let's talk about our wedding. What about spring? Garden wedding in early spring. What could be more romantic? A little thing at Christmas. I'm serious. So am I. I've had a big wedding. Believe me, there's nothing romantic about it. You just haven't done it with the right person. That's what you said about camping. Besides, when am I going to have time to, 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 to meet caterers and pick out invitations and all the other bazillion things? I could do all that. Here. Yeah, where is it written only the bride can hire caterers and florists and all that stuff? I'm pretty sure it's written in a lot of places. Look, it's only fair. I want the big wedding. I should do the work. Well, you like the ring, don't you? I love my ring. And I fell in love with you. How much more proof do you need that I have impeccable taste? You make a good case, counselor. Who's gonna plan our wedding? Cool. Is it? Wait, you think so? I went inside to find her a sweater and I asked her to come with me, but she had a fit. She was playing in the swings. Maxine, I wasn't even gone three minutes. Right, how do you know a man took her? Mrs. Haley, Mrs. Haley saw him through her window. So you think it was black, but it could have been navy, uh -huh. and it may have been a station wagon. Yes. Frank, I've got a partial plate. This guy said he saw an older model Volvo wagon. So you can catch him, right? If you have the license plate, you can look it up in the, in the computer in your car. You can look it up. I can't run a partial plate now. Well, yeah. you could put out an APB. And you would be? Maxine Gray, Department of Children and Families. How does this a DCF matter? I placed Cindy with the Zapata family six months ago, and Alma took the appropriate step of calling me. Hey, Jerry. DCF foster kid. You can go now. I have your contact mm -hmm. info. We'll put out that APB, and we'll be in touch. That's it. W would someone like to fill me in on what's happening right now? Otherwise, I'm left to think that you're just missing a witness because you have realized that the abducted child is a foster child and have concluded the case is no longer urgent. Well, you know how it is. No, how is it? Foster kids run off all the time. You have two eyewitnesses to an abduction. The jogger only saw a car going around the block slowly. It could have been someone looking for an address. And Mrs. Haley? Called last month to report aliens taking pictures of her house. Well, there could be other witnesses. And you're welcome to hunt for them. But I think your time is best spent calling little Cindy's last three foster homes. Wait, wait just a moment. Just wait a moment. Just, wait, one, one moment. Just a moment. Well, the official cause of death was strangulation, but as you'll see, the autopsy report also notes soft tissue trauma, vaginal tearing, skull fracture, and we've already gone over the toxicology report. So you're saying that Linda Hawkins was drugged, raped, strangled, and beaten? Definitely drugged, probably raped, definitely strangled, and definitely beaten. In that order? Yes. Why do you say probably raped? Well, there was no semen, so I can't be certain, but there was vaginal tearing, and so in context, it's safe to assume rape. What of this lack of semen? It's not uncommon. Because today's savvy rapist is too smart to leave behind his DNA? Objection on about 15 grounds. Sustained. The order of events. How'd you determine that? Well, the skull fracture was a post-mortem injury. I can tell that because there's no subgaleal hemorrhage, no bruising around the wound, which means the heart wasn't pumping blood at the time it occurred. So, Dr. Land, in your experience, is it typical for a rapist murderer to inflict post-mortem injuries? Objection, Your Honor. Dr. Land is not a criminologist and therefore not an expert in the behavior patterns of the, quote, typical rapist murderer. Your Honor, I'm asking Dr. Land to testify about his own experience, an area in which he is, in fact, the only expert. 
I will allow Dr. Land to answer the question with the qualification that he is speaking about a hypothetical situation. No, it is not typical in my experience. So, Dr. Land, in your experience, the typical rapist murderer vents his frustration, his rage in the process of the rape murder. There's no need to beat up a dead woman unless, of course, for example, He's trying to stage a violent struggle which never actually took place. Your Honor! Withdrawn. No further questions. New study shows research physicians tend to experience less satisfaction later in life. Who put this on my locker? It's a mystery. I'm going to Sloan Kettering in five weeks. You better get used to it. Okay, but when you come to me later in life complaining of no satisfaction... All hands on deck. Bus load of shrine next with food poisoning just pulled in. Waiting room is full. I know, yeah. There's vomiting. Yes, I'm going to miss this. Dude, dude, what is going on with you and Lily? Absolutely nothing. My information says you're a liar. You need better information. My information says there was smooching. Boy, dude, be a guy. Guys don't say smooching. Yeah, well, guys also don't withhold vital information regarding sexual conquests, which might provide vicarious thrills and or late night fantasy material for your less fortunate cohorts. Thank you. This conversation just made Shriner vomit seem like an appealing alternative. I've had the radio on all morning, and yet I have heard nothing about a missing eight-year-old abducted three hours ago. Maxine, just because it's not on the radio doesn't mean we're not working it. Meaning you have a few officers in cars. All the but cars. Put out an APB Why with all the info we got. Why isn't there an Amber Alert? You know the stats. If I put out an Amber Alert every time some foster kid took a powder, you people can't even keep track she of it. She did not take a powder. She was abducted by a man in a car. There are witnesses. Yeah, right. One old lady who's a known nutcase. Now, isn't it odd she's the only one that saw anything? Plus, I checked this kid's record. She's got a history of running away. From group homes, she has been extremely happy with the Zapata family. We had to put her in therapy because she was afraid of losing. Why the hell would she run away? Maxine, it's like I said, I got my guys looking at it. That's all I can do. overdo it you're not training for the olympics i feel fine i really think that peter is the one who's overdoing it honey you should take the home nurse and anything else the insurance company will pay for <laughs> you got a baby and a toddler now when you think you're going to get a chance to rest again gwen i was looking at your resume i noticed that you've done a lot of hospice work Ooh, yeah I had to take a break from that, you know. I got burned out. I can imagine. I just wonder, did you ever revive anyone? Or talk to someone after they'd been revived? Well, that depends on what you mean by revive. I've worked with a lot of people in and out of comas. No, I, I mean people who died. Has anyone ever talked to you about a near-death experience? Oh, no, honey. Most of the time when my people saw the light, they just kept on going. <laughs> Why? Did you go through the tunnel and see your Uncle Fred and all that? Me? No. I, I, I just wondered. Hmm. You know, I read this book one time by this English woman. She was a doctor, and she did a big study on that. Turns out, it's just your brain chemistry playing tricks on you. That's all, or your optic nerve or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it ain't God or Buddha or Uncle Fred, no matter how much folks want it to be. Oh, I'll get him. You just sit right there and relax. Okay, here's the plan. We split up. We each make sure we're seeing better people who expect us to be here. We meet at the front door. We're going in 20 minutes. I got a better plan. I'm going to fake an injury. You can call the paramedics. We can be out of here in 10. Judge Gray. Stu. David. How you doing? 
Mr. McLaren? Congratulations on pulling Danny Hawkins. That was a major coup. I don't think of it as a career most do. Still, it won't hurt, right? Especially if you win. I think it's time to change the subject. So, put him away, LeMay's finally calling it quits. Who did they pay to say something nice about him? I volunteered, actually. He was a mentor of mine. Oh. That's great. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get us the requisite cocktail so that we can appear sophisticated. Can I get you anything? I'm fine, thanks. Pal of yours? He's my fiance, actually. Really? Um, when's the big day? You know, I don't mean to be rude, but it's probably not a good idea for us to be conversing. How come? Uh, gee, I don't know. You're trying a high-profile case. I'm the judge. You don't think there's going to be the slightest appearance of impropriety? Ah. Yvonne. What are you doing? Fixing the problem. Judge Gray is concerned about the uh, appearance it, it, of an ex parte it, conversation. Yeah, it, Would you mind joining us for a minute? Hmm. Beats listening to my husband analyze the NFL. So Stu Collins is your fiance. You know what, Mr. McLaren, my personal life is off limits. It's cocktail party banter. Well, we can't talk about work. What's left? Not talking is always an option. You know, Stu's like a different person since his illness. He went to uh, Sri Lanka and hung out with the guru. And yet, I didn't hear him asking me how this trial was going to affect my soul. Would you care for bad Chardonnay or bad Merlot? See, they ran out of the bad scotch. Yes. I understand it's my turn to congratulate you. Yes, you understand correctly. Best wishes. Thank you. Has playing Jesus had any effect on your love life? Do you have groupies following you around? No, I have nuns following me around. Judas gets all the groupies. Excuse me, Fiona? <laughs> I'm Maxine Gray from DCF. Your station said that I could find you here. I'm a big f fan of your uh, uh, roving report. Did you want to say something about the play? I'm sure it's wonderful, but what, what I want to do is uh, show this picture to your viewers. Well, if Jesus could just hold this up. Um, this is uh, Cindy Zapata. She was abducted yesterday from her yard on Darlington Court by a man in a dark station wagon partial license plate JMG. Now, you're probably going to ask me if, it, if an Amber Alert has been issued, and the answer is, unfortunately, no. Cindy is a foster child and uh, as you can see she's a little on the plain side and and apparently the amber alert system is only for uh, angelic looking blonde children from wealthy families well the, that's not literally true but i am prone to pithy hyperbolic statements when i'm extremely angry yet trying to behave i'm sure i don't have to explain that to you <laughs> so so if you could just ask your viewers to call the department of children and families if they have any information i'll get out of your way before men in uniforms show up to haul me away so, um, it's a JMG, Dark Station Wagon, Cindy Zapata. Thanks so much. Uh, and, uh, thank you, Jesus. Who was that? When Danny Hawkins told you he was legally separated from his wife, you had no reason to doubt him, is that correct? Yes. I mean, no. I'm sorry, my bad. Did you have any reason to think he might be lying? No. Did Danny Hawkins have any plans for the two of you as a couple? He said we would get married after the divorce. Did he give you a time frame? No. He just said he couldn't rush things because of the kids. Did Danny Hawkins ever say anything to you regarding his wife that sounded ominous? Objection, Your Honor. Subjective. Sustained. Try, try again, Mr. McLaren. Did he ever say anything to you that sounded like he intended to cause his wife bodily harm? Objection, leading. Your Honor, do I have to audition this question 1,200 ways before I get to one that the court will allow? Overruled, Miss Dunbar. Try a little patience, Mr. McLaren. The witness may answer the question as phrased. He said... one thing. I didn't think much of at the time, but... Later, after his wife disappeared, I thought about it, about the creeps. <sighs> what was it he said that gave you the creeps? I asked him if his wife was going to be angry when she found out about me. And he said, don't worry, my wife is not going to be a problem. I 
was wondering how you could be so sure. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross, Your Honor. Go ahead. Miss Griffin, did Danny Hawkins ever say anything to you like, don't worry about my wife, I'm going to kill her and dump her in a landfill? No. Did he ever express to you any feelings about his wife? He said he loved her very much. But that they should have stayed friends and never gotten married. Did you believe him when he said that? Yes. He would get tears in his eyes when he talked about it. No further questions. Okay, here's the deal. Barnes told Simpson that the admitting nurse said she saw two doctors who looked a lot like you and Lily smooch making out outside of OR8. Well, if there was any making out to be done, OR8 would be the place to do it. It's a very romantic operating room. Give it up, Lloyd. There's nothing going on. Kyle, come on. Gunshot wound to the sternum. Take over CPR. Blood pressure's crashing. I can't see anything. Damn it. I keep losing the arteries. Switch with it. Kyle. Your goggles are covered in blood. You're not going to find a thing. Switch with me. On three. One, two. Or two sets. You got it? Yeah, give me a minute. He doesn't have a minute. It's a figure of speech. You got it. It's clamped. Let's get a pulse. Stop CPR. 140. He's back. Let's get this guy up to surgery. It's your lucky day, my friend. Coming through. Come on, you're not going to give all this up, are you? Cardiac arrest coming in the door. Wife drove him. No paramedics. Help Look before it. No way, pal. We're in this thing together. No, I can't leave work to drive your math homework to school because you were too busy obsessing about your hair to worry about it. I know. Anyone else's mother would do it. You got stuck with her worst mother on the planet. I'll see you at dinner. I love you. Bye. Judge Gray. Mr. McLaren, anything you have to say to me, I will hear it from the bench. Why is that such a difficult concept for you? I don't think you... I don't think you really want to stop a capital murder trial to hear me apologize for last night, do you? Look, I hate cocktail parties. I invariably end up apologizing to someone the next day. So you are habitually rude? Only at cocktail parties. I... Look, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm sorry. I really am. That's all I wanted to say. See you in court. the elevator. Don't make me run. You were great today. Well, lucky. I had my eyes closed when I clamped that artery. <laughs> You're really going to leave me and make me impress a brand new attending position all over again? Well, who says I was ever impressed by you? You did. I heard you. You can't take that back. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do fine without me. Do you ever get yourself hoping for a little disaster? You know, nothing major, just enough to knock out the power, trap this thing between floors, and catch up on your sleep. Every day. Why do you think I'm leaving? <sighs> Why don't we go down to the lounge and take a nap? And when we wake up, we'll call Sloan Kettering together and tell them they need to find somebody else.
So there I was, reading the microwave instructions for my breakfast burrito, naively assuming I was safe from anything so surprising, not to mention job-threatening, as watching one of my employees hijack the morning news. I thought I exhibited tremendous class, not to mention restraint. Well, maybe you can explain this to Ernest Throckmorton. If the name rings a bell, it's because it's his signature on our paychecks. Then you can call the chief of police, half a dozen detectives, and about 257 wealthy parents of angelic blonde children. Everything I said was the truth, and you know it. Well, we'll have lots of time to debate that when we're sitting on the unemployment line together, won't we? Maxine. Yes, I know. Just add it to the file. No, I think you're going to want to see these right away. The people who've seen a dark car with JMG in the license plate. I think we should call the detective about this one. A guy says a dark Volvo station wagon has been parked in the wooded lot next to his house all night. Looks like someone abandoned it. Like I say, way to hustle. Mm -hmm. It's a bad time. How long were you two stuck in here? Was it stuck? Dude, your uh, your scrubs. Oh yeah. So no, sometimes I'll do that. I'll just I'll tie them in the back. But I gotta go. Check stuff. Last time I talked to her, I called her about 6.30 to tell her I wasn't going to be home for dinner. I was trying to get caught up at the office. And she said she'd rented a movie and she was going to watch that and have popcorn and M&Ms for dinner because she was PMSy. Was she worried about being there alone? No, we both thought that neighborhood was completely safe. Did Linda keep the doors locked when you weren't there? No, not always. Um, we have a dog, but we don't have a dog door, so... We leave the kitchen door open till about 10 p.m. every night, and then Linda puts the dog in his kennel and locks the door and turns on the alarm. Objection, Your Honor. It may be confusing for the jury if the defendant continues to refer to his wife in the present tense when, in fact, she is quite dead. I don't think the jury has forgotten that, Mr. McLaren. Continue, Miss Dunbar. What time did you get home that night? It's a little after eight. And what did you find? Kitchen door was open. Dog was in the backyard. Everything looked perfectly normal, except that Linda wasn't there. I searched the house. I called her cell phone. There's no answer. I called some of her friends. It wasn't like her to go out at night and not even leave a note. So around 10 o'clock, I called the police. And, um, you know, two weeks later, they found her at the landfill. Danny, are you responsible for your wife's death? I think so. You think so? It's my fault that door was open. I wouldn't let her put in the dog door. I, I, I didn't want to spend the money. Okay, so later when you tried to commit suicide and you told the paramedics that you killed your wife, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. If it weren't for me pinching pennies, that door wouldn't have been open. I didn't kill my wife, but I am responsible for her death. No further questions. Cross, Mr. McBeth. That's a very touching story, Mr. Hawkins. But it's horse hockey, isn't it? No, it's the truth. Were you really working late that night, or were you cavorting with your 19-year-old girlfriend? I was really working. So regardless of your behavior to the contrary, you still loved your wife, and you felt responsible for her death. Is that correct? That's right. So your statement right now, I... I didn't kill my wife, but I feel responsible for her death. You see, I can do that, too. Objection, Your Honor. Grounds. Asininity. Try not a question. I'll go for it. Not a question. Sustained. Mr. McLaren. Nothing further.
So you don't remember anything about being in a coma? No, I don't, honey. Do you remember anything about dying? Not really. Let's talk about something happier that's all behind us now. Uh, who else had a good day besides us? I had a great day. What was great about it? I saved two people and I pl played well with others. I can't believe Jillian is just sitting there. Perfectly normal. Do you feel perfectly normal? I, I feel a little like Rip Van Winkle. It seems strange to wake up to a eight-week-old baby. But good strange, right? Yeah. Jillian, you don't have to feel pressured to be relieved to wake up from a coma you didn't know about. We're all so grateful, we're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have to put up with that. I'm very grateful, I just... I feel a bit disoriented. It's Sean's car. There. Ought to be an ordinance against ringing people's doorbells after dark. Oh, I'm sorry. It's your mama. Sean? The cops finally got around to checking that abandoned Volvo. We need to take a ride. Detective? Yes, that's Cindy. I'll call Oma. No, I will do that. Maxine, even if we'd have put the Amber Alert out, you don't know that we'd have found her alive. And you don't know we wouldn't have. I followed protocol. I hope you find comfort in that. I think we should at least meet with a lawyer and see if he thinks we have a case. What case, Peter? A man saved my life and Walt's. In exchange, you want to ruin his career? Look, I know that you don't have any sense of this, but I spent the last eight weeks in hell wondering if I was ever going to have my wife back. Is suing him going to get your eight weeks back? So it doesn't bother you that he almost killed you? He didn't. I die. I know. I was there. That's my point. I was there, too. That's my point. I left my body. I, I sort of popped out of the top of my head and, and, and floated up toward the ceiling. I could see you and the doctor and the nurses and Walt and... I heard Dr. Miller say she's bottoming out. I saw the nurse send you out. But the thing I remember most was the feeling. This incredible peace. It was like nothing I'd ever felt before. I didn't mind that I was dead. I didn't mind that I was leaving you and the boys behind. I was fine with everything. It, it was glorious. And then Dr. Miller shocked me with the paddles and I could feel myself going back into my body. That's all I remember until I woke up. I'm sure dying does some weird stuff to your brain. Is that it? Is that all you're going to say? I'm glad it was peaceful. What do you want me to say? Do you believe me? I believe... that's what you think happened. <sighs> Jillian... Never mind.
the defense's version of the story. A rapist broke into the house, and instead of hitting Linda Hawkins over the head with his fist or a lamp, he rummaged around in some drawers until he conveniently stumbled across Danny Hawkins' supply of dihypsal. And then somehow, he forced Linda Hawkins to swallow a couple of capsules. And then he raped her. And he strangled her. And he beat her up and took her for a drive and dumped her body in a landfill. Weigh that against this possibility. Here, honey, I, I made you a Mai Tai. Because I need to knock you out in order to stage a rape and a murder and an abduction so I can get rid of you and collect on a $500,000 life insurance policy I just happened to purchase right after I went wiggy over a 19-year-old girl. The jury has been sequestered since yesterday at 3 p.m. and there's no... Wouldn't surprise me if they quit him. It should take a monster to have committed that crime and there he sits all handsome and wholesome in his navy suit. Really not a monster. Are we done with being objective? We're not. My part's done. Is that bothering you? Well, this is the part that I'm good at. Waiting through the crap. Coming up with the right answer. Besides, I'm used to situations that are still salvageable. I mean, this thing, even if it comes out the right way, it's not like there's any redemption in it. Putting this man away redeems the whole world a little bit, don't you think? But I won't have done it. What difference does that make? I can't believe you don't understand this. Amy, you took this job. You wanted to play in the big time. You would rather be refereeing some legal ping pong match than playing in the kiddie pond where you might actually do some good, but no one notices you and your picture's not in the paper, so it's not worth anything. Excuse me. I didn't go looking for this job. It came to me. And my picture is in the paper because it is a very big deal to preside over a capital murder case, no matter how much you want to belittle or minimize it. One of my unimportant foster children was murdered yesterday. Her picture wasn't in the paper until she was a corpse. So I am not in the mood for existential wrangling and pseudo-angst. I'll try and be more sympathetic tonight. Thank you for coming in. Follow-up interviews will be next week. Check your email. Thank you, Dr. Redeker. You're welcome. Are you already interviewing for a attending physician? Well, we were going to hold a raffle, but we figured this was the more responsible way to find somebody. What about me? What about you? You've been here a year, Kyle. I'm a third-year resident with a degree from Johns Hopkins. Technically, I qualify for that job. Were you going to interview me? You're right. I'm sorry, okay? I'll go up and I'll make sure your name is put on the list. You can meet with the board next week. Forget it. Wait. Wait a second. What are you so mad about? That I'm interviewing people that aren't you or that I'm leaving? All of it, okay? I'm mad about all of it. Wait, did you think that because of what happened yesterday... Did you think I was going to change all my plans? I thought maybe you'd take a moment, maybe a day, and think about it. I'm leaving, Kyle. The only reason what happened yesterday happened is because I'm leaving. You knew that. All rise. Be seated. Okay. Uh, everyone is present, and I've been informed that the jury has reached a verdict. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. In the case of the state of Connecticut v. Daniel Hawkins, alleging murder in the first degree, how do you find the defendant? Your Honor, we find the defendant, Daniel Hawkins, guilty as charged. First up tomorrow is a motion to suppress evidence. All, all the attorneys are probably a little nervous now that you nailed your wife killer. I didn't nail him. He's not my wife killer. Uh, you know what I mean. 
So you're gonna sleep last night? I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to imply that you know you're crabby or anything, or, or that you look tired. I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be hitting the road now. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Here. Judge Gray. Mr. McLaren. I'd like to thank you. What for? What do you mean, what for? I, you did your job. The jury did their job. Justice was served. I didn't do anything. Are you forgetting that little part where you overturned the ruling that was preventing him from going to trial? Do you always get this worked up over all your cases? Anything wrong with that? I just, I can't really see you living till 97. I'll see you at the sentencing hearing. Not before. Amy, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It's my, my fault. fault. No, no, it's, it's my, my fault. fault. You, you first. first. <laughs> I feel better now. Oh. Yeah, I think I just have some control issues about this job. I see. Or life in general. But I guess I get that from you, huh? That control thing. So that's my fault? I like it better if it is. Really? Uh, because that would put it out of your control. I want a dumb mother. You'd be void silly. Let's get to the part where you did something wrong. All right. I uh, took out my job frustrations on you. And I personalized your turning your back on the juvenile justice system. I, I don't think that's what I'm doing. Yes, I know. I kept a, a wife killer from getting away with murder. That's not a bad way to spend your time. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I've had a bad couple of days and months. I'm going to bed. Yeah.